When we first watched Starship Flight 11, it just seemed like another smooth test that didn't end in an explosion. But the new footage SpaceX released shows there was far more happening than anyone thought. What looked like a routine flight actually contained several hidden tests. At first glance, the booster did what we have seen many times before. It separated cleanly from the upper stage after main engine cutoff and began its controlled fall back through the atmosphere. The giant stainless steel body of the Super Heavy slowly started to rotate and align itself for re-entry, its four grid fins unfolding like mechanical wings. These fins the booster's steering system during descent. They don't provide lift like airplane wings, but instead use aerodynamic drag to guide the rocket through the air, allowing the onboard computers to make small adjustments hundreds of times per second. In the new footage, you can actually see the glow building on the booster's skin as it re-enters the denser parts of the atmosphere. Tiny bursts of cold gas from the control thrusters help keep it stable as it falls from the edge of space. The fins constantly move back and forth, steering the 70-meter-tall rocket body toward the landing zone in the Gulf of Mexico. The precision is incredible. Considering the booster is still traveling faster than the speed of sound at this point, the booster came back through the air moving at more than 1,400 kilometers per hour, a speed so high that even the smallest control mistake could send it spinning out of control. As it descended through the thicker layers of the atmosphere, the heat and stress on the structure increased dramatically. You could see the plasma glow forming around parts of the rocket, a sign of just how much friction it was experiencing. Then, at about four and a half kilometers above the ocean, all 13 Raptor engines roared to life at once. Usually, during previous Starship flights, SpaceX would ignite all 13 engines briefly and then quickly transition to just three central engines for the final descent. But this time, they tried something entirely new. Instead of dropping straight to three engines, the team switched from 13 down to five. These five included the three center engines and two more from the middle ring, one on each side. Another strange thing the new camera footage revealed is how the booster behaved near the very end of its descent. After the engines throttled down from five to three, the rocket didn't just keep falling toward the water like in previous tests. Instead, it seemed to almost stop midair, hovering for several seconds as if it were pausing before the final splashdown. Seeing a 70-meter-tall booster hanging motionless over the ocean is surreal. That brief hover wasn't for show. It was a crucial test. SpaceX engineers have been working toward a future where the booster won't splash into the ocean at all, but instead return directly to the launch pad and be caught by the tower's mechanical arms. To pull that off, the rocket needs to hover in place just long enough for the arms to grab it. Right before the video cuts off, the booster is still about 200 meters above the surface. Then, as usual, the feed ends, leaving viewers wondering if it hit the water intact or broke apart on impact. SpaceX has done this before, cutting the broadcast just before a booster's splashdown, likely to keep the focus on the data rather than the inevitable explosion. It's almost certain the rocket was destroyed when it hit the ocean, but that was never the goal. The purpose was to measure how long the engines could sustain stable hover thrust and how precisely the guidance system could maintain balance under those conditions. Even though the booster didn't survive, the mission was a success from a testing standpoint. This was also the second time SpaceX had reused a super heavy booster, and this one performed far better than the first. During the earlier attempt, the rocket managed to complete its boost back burn but exploded just before landing, due to the more aggressive return angle. The lessons from that flight were clearly applied here. What's remarkable is that SpaceX didn't play it safe despite this being the last flight for this particular booster design. They pushed it to the limit, using it as a final test platform before moving on to the upgraded version. The footage shows how confident they've become in their systems. Every flight, even the expendable ones, now doubles as a critical data gathering opportunity. This brings us to what comes next. The next generation of the Super Heavy Booster will mark a big leap forward. It will still use 33 engines, but they'll be the upgraded Raptor 5, three models, each producing around 280 tons of thrust instead of 230.
These engines are not just stronger, they're also much simpler inside, with fewer visible pipes and components. That makes them easier to build, inspect, and maintain, and far less likely to fail mid-flight. For those who don't know, this launch was actually the final flight for this version of the Super Heavy booster. The next booster will still use 33 engines, but this time, they'll be the new Raptor V3 models. Each engine is designed to produce around 280 tons of thrust, compared to the 230 tons of the older version. The V3 engine looks cleaner with fewer visible pipes and components. Inside the booster itself, the change is more than just engines. The structure will be slightly taller to make room for larger propellant tanks. In terms of prototypes and the next flight, the booster designated as Booster 18 is identified as the first of the V3 variant to be used on the upcoming Flight 12 of the full stack. Along with that, the upper stage vehicle called Ship 39 is slated to serve as the first of the V3 Starship upper stage models on that same flight. The switch from the current generation to V3 is a major milestone. The V3 version is expected to debut sometime late 2025 through early 2026, with the first orbital-capable flights of the V3 stack likely in 2026. Each of these upgraded engines is expected to produce roughly 280 tons of thrust each, compared to about 230 tons for the current batch. A key structural change is in how the booster will handle re-entry and landing, the grid fins and other control surfaces are being upgraded and repositioned to handle higher stresses from heavier mass and increased speeds. Because the booster will be taller and heavier, its descent profile may include higher dynamic loads, steeper angles, or greater thermal stress. All things that complicate safe return. For example, the landing tower catch system will have to adapt to a larger, heavier target. The extra size and larger fuel tanks mean it weighs a lot more, so when it comes back down, it carries much greater force. The Raptor 5-3 engines can slow it down, but with 33 of them producing almost 9,000 tons of thrust, the control has to be perfect. Even a small mistake in timing or engine power could cause the booster to miss the landing zone. The new design also changes how it falls through the air. A taller and heavier booster doesn't behave the same way during descent. It moves faster, generates more drag, and is harder to keep stable. The grid fins will need to make more adjustments to keep it centered as it drops, and the guidance system will have to react faster than ever before. Because of this extra weight and speed, the Mechazela Tower, the structure that catches the booster, will face much stronger forces when the rocket comes in for landing. SpaceX might have to reinforce or even enlarge the Mechazela Tower in the future. The current one at Starbase is already huge, standing about 146 meters tall, but the upgraded booster could push its limits. <laughs> That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.